Hello, this is Zach Clark, Development and Leadership Coaching, and I want to work with you today on how to demystify your vision so that others can help you move forward. You know, if you're a leader, you're someone that God has positioned in a, a place of influence. You have people following you toward a desired outcome for the future of your ministry. And um, I love the way Mark Miller, a friend of mine who is an executive at Chick-fil-A, the way he defines this aspect of leadership, he says that the primary role is for leaders is to see and shape the future. And if that's true, that means that you weren't created to just sit in your office and send out emails and respond to emails and put out fires and react to what comes along. You are really supposed to be shaping the future. And to be able to do that, you have to be very clear. Uh, but the, the bad news is that having the vision is often the easy part because chances are you did not do anything to get it. It was just given to you. God gave it to you. And uh, you have a call in your life. Um, but the vision's the easy part. The hard part is how do you move all these people forward toward your vision? And so I want to give you just some specific ways to demystify the concept of vision so that others can be more enabled to move forward with you. Okay, so step one. Let's start with clarifying your conviction, your conviction. The whole term vision and mission and values, these words are so overcooked and overused these days. I think for a lot of us, they've lost meaning. I like the word conviction, and, and I challenge you to go back and clarify that because that's deep down. What, what is it deep down is driving me that I know that God has put in front of us? And have I got that clear? That's not a statement. That's not a, a handful of words written on your website. That's something deep down. When you look in the mirror, you know it's there, and it's what pushes you forward as God enables you to lead. So clarify that. Get really clear, and, and it may take you revisiting your vision statement. It may take you doing some additional writing. So that leads you to step two. I think a great way to do that is to paint a clearer picture of your vision as it relates to the impact on the lives of an individual person. I encourage people to write a profile. Write a profile, a bullet point list of how you would describe the man, the woman, the child, the individual impacted by your vision. This person and what they embody long term in the future, what you're hoping to see happen in their lives. I think that's a great way to clarify uh, you know, and bring this conviction that's deep inside you out where others can see it. Here is a picture of this. If you had a photograph, if I had to challenge you to pick one photograph that articulates your vision and it's a person, who would that be a picture of? That's a great question. Step three, revisit your mission statement. Now, I'm a big believer that mission statements, when they're well-crafted, should not change very frequently. But that doesn't mean you don't need to revisit it and go back and make sure that it describes who you serve and how you serve them and the foundation upon which you do these things, the why of, of your organization. So make sure that your vision is very clear of a picture of a person and make sure you've revisited your mission and that you can understand how to describe the mission is how we move forward, folks, toward that vision for a person. And then step four, I want to help you grow your influence as a leader. And the most underutilized tool you have at your disposal are your values as a ministry. Now, oftentimes, most of the ministries you work with, they haven't even done the work of clarifying their values. Maybe you have. But if you have, is it just written down or is it really describing your people at their best? And vision, uh, I mean, uh, values are not easily forced upon people or imprinted upon people. They tend to emerge by pointing them out, calling them out, reminding people who they are at their best. And I encourage you to make sure that your values are rock solid, that they're one word statements, if at all possible, so they're easy to remember. Few is better than more, but this is the most underutilized tool in you growing your influence because it helps people own how to make their own decisions. It keeps you from over managing them. They start becoming guided by this is why we do it this way because we have this value. 
So just a few steps that will help you bring new clarity for people. And people in today's world need simplicity and clarity to day after day be doing the right things that you know move you forward. And that way as a leader, you're not looking back and realizing you're on a long, long journey all by yourself. If you're a leader, that means people are following you because of your influence. Help them have that clarity. I look forward to seeing what you do with this. Thank you.